Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I last posted a video about COVID, and if I look tired, it's because I am. Here in Alberta, we've seen hospitalizations from the Omicron wave rise higher than ever before, and the tremendous number of cases is putting severe pressure on the primary care system. With me checking on all my COVID positive patients and providing outpatient support to them, in addition to my usual work as a family physician, which has only intensified. There is some good news, however. This past week, we heard news of Pfizer and BioNTech submitting an emergency use authorization request to the FDA for their vaccine to be used in children under age 5. This news is encouraging to me because children under age 5 are the last major group of people in society who are still not yet protected by the vaccines against COVID infection. Even though deaths and hospitalizations are rarer in this age group than for other age groups, they still happen, and children can get seriously sick from COVID, as well as get long-term COVID symptoms, otherwise known as long COVID syndrome. So while we wait for the vaccines to be released for this age group, let's review some commonly asked questions regarding the COVID vaccines for use in children ages 5 to 11. If you recall, the FDA authorized the use of the vaccine for children in this age group on October 29th, 2021. Let's look at the progress that's been made since then. In Canada, 54.6, or around 55% of kids aged 5 to 11, have received their first dose, and 16% of them have been doubly vaccinated. For the USA, I've made my own visualization of CDC data up until February 2nd, 2022, and it suggests a similar story, that kids aged 5 to 11 who are eligible for the vaccine have really been slow to get protected, with just over 30% having received their first shot and just over 20% having received two doses. Perhaps the only bit of good news here, and I speak as a Canadian, is that Canada is beating the US on the percentage of kids having received their first doses, 55% to 31%. But all jokes aside, there is understandably some serious concern and hesitancy on the part of parents to vaccinate one's children against COVID. In this video, I'll address three questions I was asked during my December 2021 question and answer session regarding childhood COVID vaccinations. Question one, what are the differences in the vaccine given to children versus that given to adults? Question two, are the vaccine side effects the same for kids as for adults? And question three, how do we know the vaccines are safe for children? Since this question and answer session was done in early December 2021, Currently, in February 2022, we now have much more data on the safety of these vaccines for children ages 5 to 11. So be sure to stick around to the end of this video when I'll be providing an update on vaccine safety for this age group. Let's get started. I was curious if you had any information around the differences between the vaccine and doses given to children versus those given to adults and just any information you can provide about differences for folks. So first of all, for children, the only vaccine that's been approved for children between ages 5 to 11 is the Pfizer vaccine. And in terms of the constituents of the vaccine, there's actually no difference in the actual molecules that are being administered. The only difference between the vaccines between the children and the adult, so by children I mean 5 to 11, versus the adult, and by adult I mean ages 12 and up, versions of the vaccine is the dosage. So for the Pfizer vaccine, the dosage for adults would be 30 micrograms per dose. And for the one in kids, it's a third that it's a it's a third of that. It's 10 micrograms per dose. Another question that's come in here, are the short term side effects the same for kids as they are adults? Mostly. Yeah. So mostly we, we know that, you know, the, the short term side effects that are a signal of the vaccine working in your body is day or two of fever, muscle aches, headache you know, feeling under the weather a little bit, arm soreness, which is a local reaction. And, and also, yes, myocarditis certainly is was seen amongst the ages 12 to 19 age groups. And we don't have enough data on uh, ages 5 to 11 yet because they've just been rolling out. But we do know that in the initial Pfizer study, looking at 3,000 plus kids ages 5 to 11, there were no cases of myocarditis. You know, it doesn't mean that um, rarely once or twice it, it can't come up in a population. But again, if you were vaccinating your kids and they suddenly develop chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations, the feeling of this racing, funky heartbeat, feeling dizzy, anything that would make you serious enough to go to the emergency room anyway, you take them to the emergency room and it's a treatable condition. And I guess I'd just be curious too for parents who might be feeling even more hesitant with respect to vaccinating their children. 
um, if you have any suggestions or data around how we know that these are safe for children. It's a great question, and I I empathize with people who, 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 do, who do have that certainty. Many parents out there, we all want the best for our children. Obviously, there's there's not being any long-term data that the vaccine have not been used for a long period of time in kids. I, I can understand the hesitation. Do what's best for you after you consult with your own healthcare provider. The thing is, right, right now, if you want to consider the risks of the vaccine for the children, then at the same time, it behooves you to consider the risks of not vaccinating your children. You know, we know that in children, there is a risk of not just hospitalization and death, which is rare, rarer than for adults, but also the, this very serious um, multi-system inflammatory condition, which has occurred for some kids in Alberta requiring admissions to the children's hospital, but also that with, with children, they can also get long-term COVID. So long COVID is a constellation of symptoms like breathlessness, fatigue, not being able to keep up with the other kids. Essentially, it's disability is what we're talking about. And that affects 10 to 30 percent, depending on the study, of people that comes into contact with COVID, that, that gets infected with COVID. If you uh, Google um, White Coat Black Art, it's a podcast by an Ottawa emergency room doctor. It profiles a child who's 11 years old who got long COVID and how how that child was unable to swim, even though she was a competitive swimmer back in the day, and how she's, you know, after six months, she's still not able to be as active as the other kids around her. And for adults with long COVID, um, you know, I what I do is I write disability application forms for them. And so in terms of the risks, you have to take that into account as well. And to really do a balanced assessment of whether the risk of the vaccine is uh, worth it given the opposing risks of not getting vaccinated and potentially getting COVID. And, you know, and, and I know it's a difficult decision because, you know, we, we might be able to control whether we get vaccinated or not, but that that ability to control shouldn't factor into your analysis of the risks. So I hope that helps. So those were my answers back in early December 2021. Now in early February 2022, we have updated safety data for the vaccines in children ages 5 to 11. Let's look at both Canadian and US data. In Canada, you can see from the rates of all self-reported adverse events by age group up until January 28, 2022, that the 5 to 11 age group actually reported the lowest rate of adverse events at 12 adverse events per 100,000 doses administered. Looking at the overall data, there have only been 226 reports of adverse events following 1.85 million or almost 2 million doses of the vaccine administered. This implies an adverse event frequency of around 0.01%. Note that most of these reported adverse events will be the not serious and temporary side effects from the vaccine, including pain at the injection site or feeling temporarily sick after the vaccine. Now, the Canadian data doesn't report directly the number of myocarditis events in 5 to 11 year olds after vaccine. Remember, myocarditis, or serious cardiac inflammation, is the only proven serious side effect from the mRNA vaccines. I'm guessing the occurrence of myocarditis in this age group has been very low in Canada. U.S. data, though, does explicitly state the rates of myocarditis, so let's look at that. The U.S. CDC has published data for age 5 to 11 year olds from November 3rd to December 19th, 2021. If you're wondering why we don't have more recent data, my guess is because it's still too soon to examine safety data from doses delivered after December 2021, because we have to give it the full six to eight weeks for any true vaccine side effect to declare itself. Now, examining the U.S. CDC data, They've delivered 8.7 million doses of the vaccine to children ages 5 to 11 year old. There have been 4,249 reports of adverse events for an incidence of 0.04%. 97% of these reported adverse events were not serious, and there were only 11 verified cases of myocarditis amongst the 8.7 million doses of vaccine given, out of which seven kids had recovered and four were recovering at the time of the report. Again, myocarditis, although serious, is a treatable condition. So just over one in a million children ages five to 11 had myocarditis after the vaccine. Now, the National Advisory Committee on Immunizations in Canada, NACI, 
has actually done its homework and interpreted this U.S. data for us. Their report looks at the ratio of myocarditis for boys, since we know that the risk is higher in males. For boys aged 5 to 11, there were 4.3 cases of myocarditis per million doses of vaccine. But compared with boys aged 12 to 15 years, there were 45.7 cases per million doses. And for boys aged 16 to 17 years, there were 70.2 cases of myocarditis per million doses. The report is linked here and in the video description so that you can read it yourself. In the overall population, the risk of myocarditis, according to Canadian data, is 21.2 per million doses. So the rate of myocarditis in young children not only seems to be less than in older boys, it also seems to be less than the baseline rate of myocarditis after vaccination for the general population. And of course, the rate of myocarditis after vaccine in general is acceptably low compared with the risk of COVID infection itself, such as a much higher rate of myocarditis and other bad health outcomes like death. Overall, with the data we have so far, Pfizer's mRNA COVID vaccine appears safe for children ages 5 to 11, and by some measures even safer than use in adults. If I was a parent of children within this age group, I would feel pretty confident in giving this vaccine to my children. And I look forward to seeing the FDA's decision on whether to grant emergency use authorization for use of the Pfizer vaccine in children younger than five years. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more. For now, take care and stay safe. See you in the next video.